A little over a year ago, I bought a Nintendo Entertainment System from DK Oldies that they said was refurbished. When I opened it up, I found that it had not been refurbished or even cleaned inside, at least as far as I could tell. So my opinion of DK Oldies has not been great, but recently they put out a video explaining how they refurbish things and that they've set things up a little bit differently. So I thought I should probably buy something else to see if that's true. To be fair to DK Oldies, I also bought a system from eBay that the seller said was in good condition and worked great. So let's check out the eBay system and see if it's what they said it is, compare the price to DK Oldies, and then we'll open up the DK Oldies box. Also, just for those curious, I am not the one that purchased the box from DK Oldies. Someone else purchased it, so DK Oldies wouldn't know who was buying it. This video is sponsored by BW100. More on them in a minute. Now, just for reference, I bought the Sony PlayStation 4 Destiny the Taken King console. It has the 500 gig hard drive and this includes a DualShock controller. The eBay seller says the condition is excellent. It is pre-owned, tested, and works great. It includes console, power cord, HDMI, and one DualShock controller. And these are the pictures of the system that I bought. You can see the graphics on the top are not in great condition. And a black DualShock 4. And I paid $126 plus $20 shipping. For those of you not great at math, that equals $146 for this box. But well, let's open it up and see what kind of condition it's in. And then we do need to test it real quick just to make sure it works. We do have an HDMI and power cable. And then we have the DualShock 4. It's definitely very used. The thumbsticks are basically smoothed off, but I mean, it's in okay condition. Looks like it's been sanded. I feel like this came from GameStop. And here we go. This is our $126 PS4 from eBay. It has been sanded a lot. It's not really coming across on camera, I don't think. But honestly, I feel like they bought this from GameStop and <laughs> used it and then resold it. It has been opened before. It's missing a screw on the bottom. I would say them calling this in excellent condition is definitely not true. Okay, plugged in, ready to test. It just says PlayStation 5 down here because that's the last console I had plugged in. Disk drive does has, have power. Does, <laughs> it has a disk in it. Grand Theft Auto. They did not say that it came with this game. So, I mean, I guess that's a bonus. Okay, black screen. Okay, checking storage, system storage status. Let's see if the controller connects. We got an orange light, so it's charging. Okay, controller is connected. That's good. It was not reset. That's a little worrisome. I mean, you can't really do anything with other people's accounts, but that's still a little weird that they wouldn't reset it before they sold it. Okay, looks good so far. Let's see if it plays the game that was in it. Takes it in a little slow, not too bad though. And disc is spinning up. And there we go. So while this system is definitely not perfect, I wouldn't say it's in excellent condition. So far it does work and it does show up on the TV. So that's good. And plus we get a free game. I do want to take it apart and just inspect the inside a little bit before we get to the DK Oldie system. BW100 is one of the best electronic contact cleaners out there. I always have some on my repair desk because I use it so often. I use it for things like fixing analog stick drift. If your analog sticks are just dirty, a lot of times BW100 will fix them. If they're completely worn out, then obviously cleaning isn't going to fix them. I also use BW100 for things like cleaning off flux and also just general cleaning of boards and components. Now, one of the things I commonly get asked about BW100 is why is it better than just isopropyl alcohol? The first, and in my opinion, the most important way is that BW100 is non-flammable while IPA is very flammable. BW100 is also aerosolized, which makes it really nice for getting into tight places. If you're trying to use isopropyl alcohol, it's kind of hard to get it down into the place you want it, whereas BW100 will just spray right down into any little cracks and crevices. BW100 is safe for plastics, rubber, and metal, and you can use it on basically any circuit board. If you want to get some for yourself, I'll put a link right in the description that'll take you right there. I'm not going to do like a full tear down on this or anything, but I do want to kind of get an idea of how this thing looks on the inside. I already see some sanding here. This has to be a GameStop unit. The threads on this are stripped out. That doesn't have anything to bite into. Okay, we do have some dust in the system. 
not like crazy amount. I mean, I would expect this for a used console. And let's see how big of a hard drive is in this thing. And we have a 500 gig hard drive. So that is correct. Okay, let's see how dirty it is down here. Yeah, definitely a little bit of dirt. I don't know. I think those are probably GameStop stickers too. So all signs are pointing to this being a GameStop refurb that somebody bought and then resold. Got a little dust bunny down in here. All right, and now the top plate can come off. And we have no thermal pads on the RAM chips. That's just stupid. No reason to put this plate back on without these thermal pads on, and that can cause it to overheat. Or also just cause the RAM chips to go bad at some point from overheating. So I am not super impressed with this system, and calling this system in excellent condition is honestly, in my opinion, just misleading. Now we can get the board out and see what the thermal paste looks like. Wow, I don't, I don't, that looks like mayonnaise. Is that even thermal paste? I don't know. Huh? Just kidding. That's disgusting. There's nothing even on the chip itself. It's just all squished out. There's just like some liquid there. We'll put this back together later. I probably won't film it, but I will make sure to install the perfect amount and the perfect type of thermal paste, which is not gonna be mayonnaise. So for the eBay PS4, I'm honestly not impressed. It's definitely not in excellent condition. The controller is in okay condition. It does at least work. The system at least works, but I'm not super impressed. At the same time, I did only pay $146 for it. So in one sense, I did get what I paid for. I just didn't get what the seller described in the listing. Now that we've taken a look at this PS4, let's open up the DK Oldies PS4 and see how it compares. So this is the box from DK Oldies. I have not opened it yet. I'm breaking the seal right now, right now for the first time on camera. Let's see what we got. Firstly, this one is packaged much better than the eBay console. The eBay one did come in decent condition, like there's no broken pieces or anything, but it wasn't packaged that great. This, it looks like they used, uh, you know, new paper and quality paper. That's always nice. DK Oldies PS4 Quality Control Procedure 219 2024. Hard drive size 500, technician AS and GB. Functionality confirmed, thermal paste replaced, clock battery tested, cleaned by 404. So it looks like they have a process, which is good. Let's talk about the price of this thing though. So this is the exact system I purchased. PlayStation 4 standard 500 gig Destiny edition system player pack. So this is a system in good condition which means it will look good and work free of dirt and debris, free of stickers, writing, major, major chips or cracks, and major discoloration may show minor signs of age and use, which I would expect. So it comes with a compatible controller, charging cord, power cord, and HDMI for TV hookup. Like all of our products, these items have been cleaned, tested, and are backed by our one-year warranty. In my first video about DK Oldies, the system definitely had not been cleaned. Let's check this system out and see if it is what they say it is. Okay, controller and cable. This is the charge cable for the controller. This is a freakishly long cable, which is honestly kind of cool. And let's see, controller looks good. It is, in my opinion, in better condition than the one we got from eBay, but it definitely is used and worn. Again, which is what I would expect. Okay, down here we have a brand new looking HDMI cable and a definitely a used, we got some, looks like bite marks on this cable. I'm not sure I would be selling that if I was DK Oldies, but I mean, ultimately they're not, they don't look too bad, so it's probably fine. That's the power cable. We got a number of layers of bubble wrap, wrapped both ways, which is great. This one is definitely very scratched. I would say less scratched than the eBay one. And that's probably because it hasn't been sanded, firstly. Let's do a quick test on that. We'll get a cotton bud with some IPA. Just kind of rub it around here. And honestly, not bad. 
I do want to mention this is from the email that this is the order confirmation email. The PS4 Destiny Edition in good condition. It cost $289 when we bought this thing. And then with tax, the total came to $313. So a $300 system, I expect the inside to be really good and I expect it to work basically perfectly. Let's get it hooked up to the TV and see if it'll turn on and work. Yep, power to the console, good so far. PS logo, that's good. The controller is charging. Let's see if it connects. It does not connect yet anyway. The controller does not connect. Let's try a different USB port. And it does charge. Okay, I'm gonna try resetting the controller. There we go. And nothing. Okay, that's a problem. Let's try the controller from the eBay system. And that one does connect. So immediately we seem to have a controller issue. I'm gonna get the system set up and then we'll test the disk drive. Now I'm using the eBay controller and I noticed the uh, R2 button, watch this. You can see it. It like sticks right there. On the other side, that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to work. So this controller definitely has issues as well. So I have it started up, let's test the disc. Okay, it goes in nicely. Uh, it's not spinning. And it will not read the disc. Let's try a different disc. This is my test disc. Trials Fusion, and it's in honestly pretty good condition. This is the disc we tested with the eBay console. Let's see if it'll play in this one. And same thing. DK Oldies, this is not starting out well. And same thing. So there's definitely a problem with the disc drive in this console. Let's take it apart, have a look at the inside, and see if we can figure out this disk drive issue. Honestly, I had such high hopes for DK Oldies after I saw their video about how they've redone their refurbishment process. And immediately, we're missing screws as well. Ah, oh boy. Here we go. So the disk drive doesn't work. The controller doesn't work. We're missing some screws. I mean, so far, at least, it's clean inside, but... Man, it's been a year since my last video. That's plenty of time to make changes. They said they made changes. I mean, I'm not sure what to think at this point. So far, I can say that the system is very clean. So that's progress. And I will definitely give them credit for that. Even the eBay one was significantly dirtier than this one. All right, screws are out. Feels like we have... <sighs> We're missing more, more thermal pads. So these two go over here. There's three missing right there, which would go right there. They're just not there. So another strike against DK Oldies, unfortunately. Really curious to see what this thermal paste looks like too. Well, let's have a look. I did feel some resistance from the thermal paste, so I know it's there. Okay, that actually <laughs> looks pretty amazing, honestly. That is uh... pretty, pretty. Pretty good. Definitely not the perfect amount, but I will say this might be the closest thing I've seen to the perfect amount other than, you know, the perfect amount that I put on. <laughs> okay, well, it is very clean inside. I think I'm gonna take this bottom plate off and let's see how clean the heat sink is. That's something a lot of people forget when they're cleaning these things. So let's check that out. And it is very clean. No problems at all with the heat sink. Even the fan is nice and clean. There's a tiny bit of dust down here, but that is no problem at all, in my opinion. Now let's check out that disk drive issue. And I see zero issues so far. It's hard to know whether that laser is faulty or not. It doesn't look super dirty or anything. If it was too dirty to read, then we'd probably be able to tell. But it still is most likely 
the laser. So let's get that replaced and then we'll put it all back together and test it and see if that fixed it. So we could replace just the laser, but I'm gonna take the easy way out and replace this whole assembly. So I'll remove it like that and install the new assembly. Oh, and we need to put this bottom plate on, but let's replace these rollers too. Replacing these will make it so the disc goes in much easier, goes in and out much easier. There we go. Now this little bar goes in between, just like that. And there we go. I will give this a quick clean on the inside. Let's get any loose dust out of here. Now the bottom plate. Now we just have to put the screws in. I'm not gonna film this whole process. I'm just gonna be putting this thing back together to see if all of that work will make this thing work. But I think that's all it's gonna take. I think it was just a bad laser. And now I can apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. We can't forget that. There we go. Now that this thing's together, let's turn it on and see if it works and see if this disk drive works. Okay, we got the system started up. Let's, just for fun, let's plug in the USB cable that they provided, just to make sure we don't have a problem with my cable. And we get the charging light. And if we press the PS button, just nothing, nothing at all. Try to reset it again. Same thing, nothing. But if we use the one that I got from eBay, we'll plug it in, we get the charge light, and then it connects. So now the true test, let's see if the disk drive works. So I'm gonna use Grand Theft Auto, see what happens. Takes it in really nicely, and, and there we go. All fixed, all it took was replacing that laser. So overall, I feel like DK Oldies probably has improved their process. This console is definitely much cleaner. And I mean, a lot of it worked, but unfortunately the disk drive didn't work and the controller also didn't work. To DK Oldies credit, they do offer a warranty on this, so I can just send it back and get my money back. Now the eBay console, I was also disappointed with. It definitely wasn't what their description said it was. But at the same time, the controller worked and the console was fully functional. The eBay console was also significantly cheaper. I kind of expect to be disappointed when I only pay $146 for a PS4 and controller. But when I pay $300 for a PS4 and controller, I expect that I'm gonna be impressed. And unfortunately, in this case, I definitely was not. Let me know in the comments your experience with DK Oldies and let me know if you've had a good one or a bad one. If you wanna see the first video I made reviewing a DK Oldies refurbished NES, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see what I thought of it. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.